back when the first half of season two of The Owl House came out, we binged the first half. <laughs> and one of the things that was revealed was that all of the students used to carve their own palismen from the palisman wood. So in a lot of stories, a witch will have their staff and their companion or whatever you want to call it. A palisman is like both of those things combined. It's a staff and a pal. Yeah, a palisman. So you carve this magical creature out of the magical wood. And as we were watching the episode where they were talking about it, I said, oh, you guys, that'd be a fun project. We should carve Palisman. So it's been a minute since we decided we were going to do this, but I've been sort of dreading this one because I have fear of you guys injuring yourselves. And while you have some experience with tools, it's not a ton of experience with tools. So before we did any carving, to set ourselves up for success and to try to make it so that you guys would get what you wanted, a few decisions were made. One of them was that I wasn't going to carve one. I was going to help you guys. And another decision was that you guys were going to sculpt them out of clay so that we had a reference for the 3D object. What are you making, Ty? I'm making a dragon. However, in my drawing of it when I was figuring out colors and stuff. I colored it black and purple because those are cool colors. Your two favorite. And it ended up kind of looking like the Ender Dragon I did. from Minecraft. So now I have the Ender Dragon as my palisman. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what are you making? I'm making a little fishy. Yep. Because like of course you are. You know what, though? I think fish was a good call because it's a good shape to make for your first wood carving, right? A dragon? <laughs> a little bit of a challenge for your first wood carving ever. So we used armature wire, aluminum foil for the armatures, and then polymer clay to build most of them. And then you finish yours off with epoxy sculpts. So once we had the clay versions, I photographed them from the side, from the front, and from the top. And then I took those photographs into Illustrator and I traced them and I made templates that were the exact scale of the pieces of wood that we had so that we could cut them on a bandsaw. And then we went to Professor Pickle and Aiden Slab's house because we don't have a bandsaw and we used their bandsaw. They were super nice and let us use their bandsaw, helped us out. It's always awesome to see them. They let you guys smash things with a sledgehammer. Aiden showed off all of his projects. It's fun to see what other makers are working on. This was you guys' first time using a bandsaw, what'd you think? It was cool and fun. Always wear your safety glasses. So we cut around one side of the lines that we had made and then glued pieces back on so that we had a flat surface and so that we had the template so that we could cut the other side so we could get both profiles cut. And you guys, since you were kind of new to the bandsaw, especially Ty, you were being very conservative with your cuts and you didn't want to get right up on that line. So gluing in the pieces, they were lots and lots of hollow zones for all the little nibbles <laughs> that we took out. But I think you guys both did such a good job. You were really patient, which is important with a bandsaw. And you just let it go at the speed that it wanted to go. And you kept your fingers away from the danger zone. The bandsaw is really spiky. The and, blade. And then it's like a little yellow zone that you can't get your fingers out. Yeah. Or you'll get hurt in your finger, you'll get cut off. Yeah, you did a really good job not putting your fingers in the yellow zone. Daddy showing me how on a piece of actual wood. How to whittle with a knife. Mm -hmm. And you guys practiced with some carving foam. I had a bunch of leftover carving foam from a work project years ago. And it's a good place to start because you learn the motions and how to hold your hands to keep yourself safe. But it's a lot easier to carve than the wood. So this was good practice. We bought the safety gloves because after months of putting off this project, I finally was like, okay, if we get the safety gloves, then they can do it. Get the anti-cut-your-finger-off gloves. Yeah. Then we did a little bit of learning how to use a Dremel. We would swap out the burrs to use on the Dremel. And we also used little sanding drums on the Dremel to do some finishing work. This is what the dragon looked like straight out of the bandsaw. This is before any whittling happened. This is just with the bandsaw. And it did 90% of the work. 
Ty, what was your favorite tool? The knife. Yeah, that's what I thought. Not once did you slip. I couldn't believe how good you were with that knife just immediately. Here you are cutting a notch between her hands. Paws, what are they? Claws. Hands, claws. Paws. Feet. The hand, the hand claws. The hand paws. Paws. The front paws. The front claws. Yeah, whittling was fun. As we were watching the episode where they were talking about it, I'm picturing all of these poor magical children with no carving skills, no experience, no artistic abilities. You know, they've got other strengths, but not necessarily those strengths trying to carve these talisman and how they all turn out to look like a thing and not like a lump, I don't know. And we made a couple of jokes about, you know, <laughs> lumpy number one, lumpy number two. This is my talisman log with googly eyes. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Here's Sam working on her fish. So this is what it basically looked like straight off of the bandsaw. And then just to round over the squariness, you were using a sure form. It's like a cheese grater for wood and it takes off quite a bit of material kind of easier to wield and you don't have to push as hard as the knife and it's not gonna hurt you as badly as the knife like it'll slice off a layer of skin but it's not gonna slice off a finger. So it was a good one for Sam. And then you guys spent, I think, an hour with Sam in Ty's lap and Ty whittling the fish. And you guys were just chatting and being adorable. Ty whittling on the little fishy and Sam giving her directions every now and then. I'm sure it was super comfy and easy to whittle with somebody in your lap. <laughs> Here you are sanding very effectively. <laughs> Some effective sanding there. Like aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the stool was wiggling more than she was actually like. <laughs> You guys spent hours and hours and hours on these things. And this is what they looked like when you guys were finished with the whittling. They're so good. They're so good. I'm so impressed, but they're not finished yet. Samantha decided that she wanted some gigantic bulging eyes. And then Tyler, of course, has to add the tail and the wings. So Ty's using one of my old paint poles, but budget constraints. <laughs> so she's using epoxy sculpt, which is two part putty that hardens rock, rock, rock hard, air dries when you mix it together, equal parts. And it works a lot like air dry clay where you can smooth it out with water and it's pretty easy to work with. It's super sticky when you first mix it and it gets less sticky and kind of firmer over time and dries in a couple of hours to four hours. And then once it's dry, you can tool it, which means you can drill into it or sand it or carve into it more. This is the wings. They were cardboard with epoxy. At first we tried to make the wings fully out of epoxy, but that just was not <laughs> working. Yeah, the thin epoxy was not behaving. Sam and I cut a ping pong ball in half and glued it on to either side of the fish's head and then smoothed over the edges with some more epoxy. And here they are after the epoxy is all cured. Paint time. It's paint time. Sam's painting her fish orange. You always do orange fish. We have some scraps from what we cut off with the bandsaw that we were using to test the paint. We wanted to have some of the wood grain show through a little bit. So Sam's spraying it with water and then painting it so that some of the wood grain shows through. Of course, bathwood doesn't have very strong grain. So, uh, but we wanted it to look like wood because you guys actually made it out of wood. When I got the orange paint on my paintbrush, I dabbed some off so that it's even more yeah. translucent. Yeah, so that it wouldn't get too much to seep into one spot of mm -hmm. the wood. Because the wood was very thirsty and it would suck it up and then you'd end up with a dark patch. Mm -hmm. That's smart. This was our setup for the poles. I cut a hole in a box and shoved it in there to kind of hold it steady. And then we had the rubber bands around the camera stand there to prevent it from spinning when you didn't want it to so that it could kind of hold its position while you were painting on a part. And now Sam's doing some pupils. I use Posca for the eyes. For the pupils. Yeah. I love the giant shiny pupils on the giant eyeballs. They're spectacular. And then here's mine, as you can see. It's mostly black with some purple accents. 
really like how the tail on mine turned out. The wrapping around and then the little feathery and also the shiny. The shiny is good. She's beautiful. Do you have a name for her? I was thinking something like Void. Oh, that's right. Void. Void's a good name. What did Sean say it should be? Bartholomew. Bartholomew. That'd be a good name too. Maybe maybe Sam could name her Fish Bartholomew. <laughs> Bartholomew the fish and avoid the dragon. Mm -hmm. I think you did a good job making buddies for yourselves. Now you can go forth and do uh, magic and have friends. <laughs> and battle some monsters. You made the friendliest shape with that fish. It's the friendliest <laughs> shape. It's got like the friendliest curves and little bloopy tail and the bloopy head and the bloopy eyes. He's it's such just a tiny little smile. He's such a friend. And then Tyler's got the jagged edges and it's all squarey, which is great because it's sort of an ender dragon-ish. So the hard edges and sharpness of it is perfect for a dragon and like a, a Minecraft. Yeah. Perfect for a Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> for a Minecraft. Uh -huh. <laughs> not not the Minecraft, but a Minecraft. <laughs> like one of those knockoffs. <laughs> oh no, those are terrible. They're always so bad. They never work. Yours, your your dragon is not a knockoff. She's beautiful and perfect. Great job, you guys. 